For the next couple videos, I'm going to be working off of a very simple crowdfunding contract. So I'm going to create a new contract called crowdfund, and I'm going to store three pieces of state on it. First, I'm going to store the address of the beneficiary of the crowdfund, so who gets the money if the crowdfund is successful. I'm also going to store the crowdfunding goal in way, and then I'm going to store um, the deadline in seconds of when the crowdfund campaign will end. And then I'm gonna create a constructor function. And this is gonna take three arguments. First, it's gonna take the address of the beneficiary. Then it's going to take the goal in way. And then it's also gonna take the duration in seconds that we want the campaign to last. And then we can initialize the state by setting the beneficiary equal to the beneficiary that we pass in. We can set the goal equal to the goal that we pass in. And then we can set the deadline of the crowdfund campaign to the current timestamp in seconds, plus the duration that we want for it to last. Next, I'm going to create a struct that represents a funder. And this is going to take the address of the funder and then it's going to take the amount of their contribution. And then I will instantiate one more piece of state, which is of an array of data type funder that's just called funders. And then I'm going to add a couple of functions. First, I'm gonna add a function called contribute, which is payable. And this is how you send money to the campaign. And this will just funders.push a new funder where the first argument is the message.sender. And then the second argument is the message.value that they send with them. I'm going to add a function called payout. So this is what you'll do if the campaign is successful. And we'll say if this dot balance is greater than or equal to the goal of the campaign and now is greater than the deadline of the campaign, then beneficiary dot send this dot balance. And then I'm gonna make a function called refund that the beneficiary of the campaign can call if he just wants to refund all the donations and the campaign is not successful. So we'll make a function called refund and we will set a uint256 index equal to zero. And we'll say while index is less than funders.length, then funders index.adder.send funders index.contribution and index plus plus. And this will loop through all the different funders and it'll just get their address and it'll send their contribution back to them. And probably we only want the actual beneficiary to be calling this function. So we can just put a little guard at the top of it like that. And now this is a basic skeleton of a crowdfunding contract. There's things wrong with this contract, which we're gonna talk about, but the, the basic idea is there. One thing I forgot to do was add semicolons to my struct declaration, so let me do that now, and then I'm going to deploy this contract. So first I'm going to start my test RPC, then I'm going to sync the latest version of the Decipher CLI, Decipher TV at 0 0.1.15, this is episode 15, and then I'll do Decipher-M test RPC. Make a variable called source, which I will copy the contract code into. And then I'm gonna deploy this contract by doing var deployed, equals decipher dot create contract and I'll pass in the source but we want to remember we have parameters to the constructor function so we actually need to pass those parameters in as the first argument so I'm going to pass account one as the beneficiary and then the goal I'm going to make web three dot two way seems to be in way and we'll say 10 ether is the goal of this campaign and then the duration I'll make 10,000 seconds which is about three hours something like that and then in as part of the options I'm going to pass a million gas into the into the deploy script um, just because we're initializing variables. I want to give it enough gas so that it doesn't error out. And this will deploy the contract to this address and we'll have this deployed object and we are good to go. So now some generous people come along and they start to contribute to our campaign. So we have deployed.contribute and we'll say the value that this person is going to contribute is going to be web 32 way one comma ether. And this will be from account two. So this is just a contribution from the campaign from account two. Account three will also contribute in, in Ether, and then account four will contribute in Ether. And if we look at the cipher.ether balance of the deployed contract, we'll see that it's three Ether, and things are going well. But maybe things don't go very well. I decide that I am going to refund them for some reason. They thought I was selling something that I maybe wasn't. So I could then do deployed.refund 
and I will call this from account one, who is the beneficiary. And I'm also gonna give it, let's say a million gas again, because we need to loop through some objects. And you'll see that this refund does look like it worked. The decipher.ether balance of the deployed contract is down to zero. But if we look at this transaction that we used to refund it, and we're gonna take a look at this gas usage. So let's look at this in decimal, because it's in hex format right now. And we'll see that this is about 43,000 gas that it took to refund this contract. And the amount of gas used in that refund function is going to be directly correlated to the number of funders because we are looping through the array of funders each time and that takes a computational cycle for each loop and then we're sending ether back to those funders so this gas usage will increase with the number of funders interesting so let's say that i decide okay i made a mistake with my initial description of my product that i was crowdfunding for but now it's better let's start the crowdfund up again so my friends believe me, account two decides to contribute an ether, account three decides to contribute an ether, and then account four decides he's gonna contribute an ether also. So things are going well. But maybe account five comes along and he decides he does not like account two very much and he would prefer that he actually loses his money. AKA, he makes this so that it's impossible for the beneficiary to actually refund his ether. So he comes up with a really interesting idea. He says, instead of donating one ether to your crowdfunding campaign, I'm just going to send one way, the smallest amount possible. It's gonna be from account five. And not only am I gonna send one way to your campaign, but I'm gonna do it a hundred times. So four of our I equals zero, I is less than 100, I plus plus, I'm going to send one way to your contract. And now if the beneficiary tried to refund the contributions here and gave it a million gas, it still looks like it works, but let's look at the gas usage here. So we can do web 3.2decimal and paste in this number. And we'll see that now it takes 805,000 gas to refund all the accounts because we spammed it with a hundred very small donations. So maybe account five was even smarter and he didn't just do a donate, hundred spam donations. He did a lot more than that. So let's spam it again with the contribution and again and again and again and again. And now when the beneficiary tries to refund the contract with a million gas, he's going to get an error that he's out of gas because the amount of gas it would take to actually execute this contract and refund everyone is higher than the million he put in. Okay, maybe he can do it with two million. Out of gas. So maybe he tries to boost it to five million. And we get a different error. This error says that we exceed the block gas limit. Now it turns out there is a cap on the maximum amount of gas you can have in a single block in order for it to be mined into the Ethereum blockchain. If you go to ethstats.net and look at this thing that says gas limit, this is the current maximum amount of gas that a single block can have in order for it to be mined. So if you have a transaction that requires more than this gas limit to execute, that transaction will effectively be impossible to send to the Ethereum blockchain because it won't get mined. Now the block gas limit is dynamic. Each miner has the option to adjust it by a slight percentage each time they successfully mine a block. And the miners can adjust the gas limit up or down depending on the needs of the network. It's a much more dynamic workflow than something like Bitcoin, which has a very political argument over what the amount of trans the size of transactions should be allowed into a single block. So if I come back here and I copy the block number right here, and I do web3.f.get block and I pass in the block number, we'll see information about this specific block, but one of the things that we can get is the actual gas limit at the time that block was mined. So we can see that the gas limit was 4.7 million, um, and we tried to use 2 million gas and failed. And we could have kept trying to increase our gas up until the gas limit of 4.7 million, at which point if the transaction refund required more gas, it would have been impossible to execute. Now, there's a smarter way that we could have written this contract, and you'll see this pattern happen a lot in situations where you want to loop over data, and we will look at those in the next video.